indoor bank circuit. It's a real trick to running indoors. Clean start. We will concentrate on Freeman and Gaines, but it will appear that Barrett's got a very big lead early. Freeman seems to be running very well. They've got one lap to go, and Freeman looks to have uh, Gaines, but just for the moment now, Gaines that runs this bend beautifully. Gaines had running very hard around the bend. Yeah, Freeman will run hard around the top bend. It's Gaines in front of the stage. Freeman will attack her again. Gaines has got a good lead. Freeman coming out of hard. Gaines for Freeman. They hit it. Oh, it's nearly a dead heat. Gaines on the inside, maybe from Freeman. It's pretty hard to tell the finish line from here. Gainsford had a good lead off the last turn. Freeman attacked her over the last 20 metres. It was a terrific race. Living In reply, Atherton and Stewart put up some resistance, but with their departures, so too England's chances. McGrath restricting the visitors to just 22. And Mike Atherton lifted hopes. Over the top this time. Down the wicket, over the top. On a turning pitch, Tim May finally broke through. His scalp a reluctant Alex Stewart on 48. Yes, what a touch! He's waiting for the call, as the batsman is saying, it's a bump ball, this is very interesting. He's a judge out. Stewart thinks not. This is a very interesting situation. Umpire here officiating. It was a, one of those doubtful ones. No doubt over the next dismissal. Graham Hicks for six, two for 112 oh, in the 29. Tim May has done it. Now that's pressure. A familiar sight developed. England batsmen struggling against the spin. Stuart Law further tightened the screws. Shout, and he's going to run into Graham Gooch now because he's got rid of the England captain. Three for 133. Atherton out for 60. Needing more than six and over, the tourists couldn't yes, resist Craig right, McDermott. He's in the air. Could this be up? Yes, he's got in. Good catch. That was hit high and down towards square leg. Two runs later, a forgettable debut for Craig White. Oh, he's bowled him. That has hit the off stump. What a disaster this is for England. Five for 149. Fortunes rested with the veteran. But Graham Gooch's support Let was thinning. Yes, he's gone. Oh, this is going to be out. And he's hit it. Yes, he's gone. Gooch surrendered in the 45th over, beaten well, by McDermott's out. reach. That was Warren's last ball. Can you believe that? McDermott and Glenn McGrath strolled through the tail. Australia now two from two. Australia, not a one-man team. Um, Fleming. Carl Vandekuyt caused one of the upsets of the evening, winning the men ahead of three times world champion Greg Foster. But if Foster, he might have him. Vandekuyt has got him. 790. It was down to a photo finish for the women's 60 metre sprint. Melinda Gainsford just tipping Monique Myers. Gainsford gathering her in. Myers still in front. It's close by Think Gainsford. Jamie Marsh then caused the second upset of the night, beating world number one Dennis Mitchell to take out the men's sprint. Commonwealth Games gold medalist Nicole Bodeman took out the long jump, while Melinda Gainsford notched her second victory, crossing the line just ahead of traditional rival Kathy Freeman in the 200 metres. The Aussies were on fire, proving far too strong for the Americans. Daryl Holson winning the 200 metres, Paul Green the 400, and Brendan Hannigan clinching the 800 metres. Right. The Aussies batted first, amassing three for 254 off their 50 overs. Stuart Law made 110, while David Boone finished unbeaten on 98. In reply, the visitors were never in the hunt, being thrashed by 84 runs. Australia was clearly using today as an experiment, with McDermott 12th man and Stuart Law opening the batting. Slater didn't seem to mind who he was paired with. Great shot, four runs. But on 10, he got a little overconfident. Could be out in the air, but we'll four safe points getting under it. This could be a big wicket, it is. Zimbabwe it's delighted to have the Aussies at one for 12. The visitors were allowed to get away with some wide deliveries, but when they got online, Mark War showed his oh, style. That one well too. That's a bad delivery. But his display was cut short by a great catch. Oh, good catch. Beautiful. Grand Flowers, superb efforts, removing War for 12 at two for 55 in the 12. That brought local hero David Boone to the crease, and his stay should have been short-lived. Stuart Law, though, is enjoying his opportunity, moving confidently to a half-century. Boone provided great support, the pair keeping the scoring rate at more than four runs and over. Law did survive a difficult chance at the hands of Andy Flower, but made the most of it and brought up his maiden hundred in style. Going over the top. Yes, that's six. Oh, he hit that one. He looks headed for even more runs, but for another great catch by Grant Flower. Yes, what a good catch. Law out for 110. Boone continued the assault as the Aussies pushed for a score of over 250. 
He almost tapped off the innings with 100 as well, but had to settle for 98, Australia 3 for 254. Zimbabwe's hopes rested with the Flower Brothers, but quickly faded. And gone. 1 for 15, soon became 2 for 24. Oh, bold in. Campbell out for one, and the tourist needed something special from Captain Andy Flower. Oh, a beautiful shot. But he would have been dismayed with the support from his predecessor, Dave Houghton. Oh, he's bold in. The Aussies were having a great time. Ian Healy planning the dismissal of Andy Flower. That's well caught. If he hadn't have been caught, then he would have been stumped. Don't you love it when a plan comes together? With the contest all but over, Mark Waugh decided to again display his fielding magic. His amazing accuracy leaving Zimbabwe at 5 for 73. From there, the tourists simply tried to see out the 50 overs, and they were helped by Stuart Law. The wickets tumbled gradually. Zimbabwe never a chance of victory. In the end, even David Boone and Michael Slater were given a bowl. The visitors finishing at 8 for 170, and in need of vast improvement if they're to be competitive for the rest of the series. Anthony Hudson, 10 News.